Mm -hmm. uh, welcome to the Green Access Progressive Network. It presents Calvin Taylor. I am Calvin Taylor, and this is Angela Walker, uh, the VP candidate of uh, Green Party. Uh, thank you for joining me for, for this uh, episode, I guess you could say. Thank you for having me. Uh, now, I see uh, you're a member of Socialist, uh, Socialist Party USA also? Yes, I am. Okay, and, uh, and you be all, uh, just like uh, uh, Howie Hawkins, uh, you became the nominee for, for, for that organization as well, right? Yes. Uh, no, and I think, had, okay. no, I was going to say, I think, you know, because a lot of people have a lot of confusion around that. Mm -hmm. um, so just to clarify, the Socialist Party of the USA does not have ballot lines. So it's not like we're running. It's, it's essentially like a very big endorsement. So. Oh, okay. All right. So, okay. So, yeah, that, that, there, there was some confusion as far as the part goes, and I, I think I uh, brought the question to Malin Hoffman the first time I interviewed with her, which I'll be doing that again on uh, Tuesday. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, okay. So now, now I understand more and more about that. Since they, are, they don't have a ballot line, you guys are able to uh, essentially have co-nomination. To represent them as well, yes. Okay, well that's nice. Uh, uh, what other endorsements do you guys have as far as, uh, I know, um, oh, the Solidarity, I want to say? Yes, and I haven't like checked through like our, we have like a list of them and I haven't looked at it, but I know that um, I saw the one from Solidarity in my feed. Hmm. Uh, I think it was today, as a matter of fact. I've been kind of out of the loop, so. Oh, okay. But yeah, <laughs> it, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, sounds like it. Congratulations as far as that part goes. Uh, I, uh, now, my goal uh, with this channel, the network, as I'm, I'm calling it anyway, is to like be like a uh, far left of sorts, uh, kind of more, more left than, say, the Young Turks, who have become more of a moderate, uh, as, as far as I can see. And I, I, I stopped uh, really watching them once I realized that they had, hey, Duger, uh I uh, asked uh, the spoiler question to the, at that time, uh, nominee for, uh, for uh, um, governor for Ohio. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I meant a loss of what her name was, but when he asked her about the spoiler um, question, that lost me as far as uh, being wanted, wanted to be a, a fan of theirs. So I figured since I am on a channel, I might as well uh, become the left uh, far left, as, as I call it, the channel for like everything from Green Party to Socialist America to uh, uh, Social Alternative, I mean, to uh, so, uh, SPUSA. And so I promote and I I ask to interview uh, people like yourself and other um, members. Okay. So th that's what I'm trying to do as far as that part goes is uh, promote and, and uh, interview and highlight the not so highlight as far as the candidates go. So, uh, and I'm very happy to be doing that. I think it's important. I think that, you know, a lot of people's resistance to third parties is mm -hmm. because A, they don't know much about us and, you know, they don't realize that that's by design. We don't get, you know, mainstream media in the way that the two parties of the, of the duopoly do because they don't like competition. <laughs> so. Oh. You know, I, networks I, I, like yours are very much appreciated. And and, uh, we, and I appreciate you as far as that work also. Maybe I can get some more people to contribute more to this channel to make an actual uh, network. So <laughs> anyway, but I will do my very best to make sure that, uh, that uh, every left organization is promoted and highlighted and some attention brought to it. Um, I mean, yeah, uh, one question I've been wanting to ask and that uh, maybe you would know this. Uh, what is the membership um, percentage that has grown since, say, Bernie Sanders has uh, dropped out and a lot of people are exiting the uh, Democratic uh, um, Party and en entering uh, the SBUSA, Social Alternative, and uh, Green Party? Would you happen to know uh, there, uh, what the, uh, the stats are on that? Not offhand, no. Okay. Uh, m maybe. Um, Maybe if you can, you can email me that, so that way I can I can introduce that into one of my shows as far as the part goes. Um, if we've got it, I mean, I think the only party that we would, you know, I can ask SPUSA too, of course, 
But, you know, as far as DSA and, and, you know, their stats, I wouldn't have access to that. But I can give you, if we have it for the Green Party and also the SPUSA, I can ask for those. Okay, well, I, and I appreciate it. Thank you very much as far as the part goes. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, uh, now, you, uh, now you, you've been an activist yourself uh, for, quite, for quite some time, right? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, when, uh, what age do you think uh, you started, started becoming an activist? I'd like to say, you know, my teens. I've been, you know, taught from my family from very early on that money is secondary to people and we don't put things over people and, and things like integrity, honesty, um, compassion, the way that you move in the world, those things are important. And I was taught that they are more important than money. So I believe it was, you know, I'd say between 15 and, and seven. No, nah, I was about 15. About 15? When, um, yeah. Hmm. I think it was about, about 15. So it sounds like you're around the same age as what Howie Hawkins, I think uh, he said that he didn't have a party when he was 13 or something like that. And then mm -hmm. they got more into the uh, the Green Party or the Green Party. I was, um, oh. Green workers or something like that. Uh, yes, yeah, he's been a member of a lot of different um, left organizations. Hmm. Uh, let's see, uh, would you have to know what the uh, status of uh, uh, the um, of um, uh, being on what on how many states of uh, ballots you guys are on? I don't have it in front of me, but I know. I'm I sorry, want I to it. say no. I want to say we are on at least 20 states. I know New Jersey just came through. I believe Texas just came through. We're fighting for ballot access. We're waiting to see what's happening in Washington state. Um, we are working on Wisconsin and Ohio. I think there's, there's some wrangling going on. Illinois is on deck. So, you know, it's happening. And I think, you know, I'll just say we're, you know, it's about 20 states that I can say right now hmm. without, you know, the ones that just came through. And um, I think it's important that folks know that our state, you know, our strategy is all 50. So yeah. Yeah. we're working on, and it's, it's an uphill battle, but I think we can do it. Yeah. I, when, when I look, when I look at how the DNC and RNC uh, have both uh, kind of co-opted the uh, ballot and the ballot line there. And mm -hmm. This is why when I, I go, I do a, a, a Facebook live uh, like almost every day except the weekend. And I think I've shared quite a, quite a few, quite a few of them with you. Um, yes. I, I I always try and tell people to uh, to shock the system at the ballot, vote uh, left wing third party and not like maybe somebody even like the libertarians or uh, Tea Party for that matter because they're basically all in the, within the same um, party line really. Uh, the libertarians are just a smidgen to the left of the Republicans, but not too much. And as far as far as I know, it, but I mean, maybe I'm wrong about that. But um, but every time I try to get on the uh, every time I get on the uh, the Facebook live, I always tell people to if you want to, to change the system, you have to change it by voting third party. That's the only way the other parties are going to listen to you. If not, y your vote is not wasted. Your vote has gone to the actual party you want. You want representing you. Yeah, that's a that's a, a premise that we we state a lot with this because that that question comes up a lot. Yeah, when when that, when I hear when, when I hear people try to uh, downplay the Green Party or any other third party um, as spoilers, that that rubs me the wrong way because there is no such thing as spoilers. It's only a vote for the actual party. And and I mean, as far as policies, not for the party itself. Yes. So anyway, that's neither here nor there anymore, really. But uh, anyway, let's see. Now you guys are for Medicare for all, but at a community-based um, community-based uh, way of doing it. Yes, I mean we believe that you know the way that you uplift, which is also a tenet of socialism, is community control of the means of production. It, it's owned by the workers it's yeah. owned by the people in the community and so you know making that on a larger scale 
it, you know, we're calling for community control of police, community control of schools. Um, and, you know, it's not, it's one person, one vote, of course. And yeah, then, yeah. you know, folks get together and, you know, create federations and, and, you know, elect folks that speak for them, truly speak for them, truly represent them. But I think that one thing that gets lost in all of the red baiting that has happened in this country is the fact that at its heart, socialism is truly democratic. That yeah. is, that is, it's, you know, it is, that's at its heart. So um, we are advocating for community control of the entities that most directly affect our lives. Uh, that, that you've obviously been uh, keeping up with the things in the, as far as protests, not riots. I don't see them as riots. They're they're no. they're more or less protests. And but the the uh, police the police departments have been treating them as a riot, which is of not that which it doesn't balance out because they're putting far much into what, what is actually not there instead of treating it as a, as it is, which is a protest. So, I mean, uh, I think uh, Seattle has been doing that. Uh, they have quite a few protests. I've been uh, advocating for the, for the recall of Jane Durkins. Uh, last I checked, uh, that petition's going forward. I think they need like 56,000 uh, signatures for that. Um, mm -hmm. I may be wrong about that, but that's why last I uh, checked anyway. Uh, I heard that. I'm, I've, I've actually been trying to figure out if she was actually up for election this year or not, but that's not, that, that shouldn't be a part of this interview. Uh, but um, and I yeah I, I hear even in Portland Portland's been having having their their fair share of uh, mil, uh, militant uh, um, police police departments acting in a military fashion. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm looking at this and like they're not being violent. The people who are being violent are the ones that are actually trying to instigate with the cops and are totally separate from the actual protesters. The protesters are the ones that are actually being non-violent, only saying what, 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 what is uh, in their heart and protesting what's been going on. But I would interject that if you are part of the power structure of this country, which the police are, mm -hmm. um, then they're not going to look at this the same way that you do. And any sort of standing up, you know, this narrative of peaceful versus, you know, violent protesters. The protesters, the folks, even the folks with the bottles or the bricks or whatever, they don't have guns. Yeah, exactly. They don't have the equipment that, you know, these paramilitary police forces are coming in and coming at them with. Exactly. So when we're talking about violent, I think we're going to have to, you know, discuss what we're talking about when we're talking about violence and who's doing it and also i think it's just very important to understand that you know it is not the role of the police to be on the side of the people when they're standing up against their government the police's yeah. job is to enforce what is in the best interest of the government yeah and that's what they're doing I, I remember uh, years back, uh, I, w I was told that like um, American militants, like white American militants who were supposedly waiting for that day where the government would get too out of hand and become too uh, militaristic on their, on their own people, that they would stand up and fight that, uh, that government. I've seen mm -hmm. nothing of the sort except for I've seen them actually join in with the government to a certain extent, uh, like, like groups like the Proud Boys, who are, uh, uh, as far as I know, about a militant style um, uh, group, and other it's groups like that. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, I know. I understand. <laughs> yeah, I call them not so proud boys. But that's the point. Uh, I know. I, mean, I, I find it interesting that, that people who, so, who are supposedly against uh, uh, militant type governments uh, become militants themselves on that, on that same side. And it just seems funny. It's like it's the same thing with uh, the GOP and, the, and, the, and their depths of the hawks who love to spend on uh, on their own um, donors and not necessarily give that much to the people that actually spend the money to the economy, making it uh, a, a better economy. Uh, that's why I'm no, you're a, not surprised. No, you're not surprised. <laughs> no, no, that, no, that, no. That's why I'm keep advocating for uh, shocking the system. 
as far as, far as the ballot box goes. And I'm also a, a big fan of MMT. Um, I've been kind of studying that a little bit. And I was, uh, when you and Howie Hawkins had the, the last uh, Q&A, I'm not sure which one was like 15 or something like that. You got a number of them, I see. Uh, but I forget which one it was. Uh, I was the last one though. Um, somebody actually asked about it, uh, about MMT, and he, I was pleasantly surprised to knew what MMT was because I mean a lot of people aren't talking about that as far as um, politicians. I mean, I was like, okay. I mean, I I missed most of it because I was doing something else. But I was like, okay. But I, I understood he knew what MMT was. And oh, so yes. yeah, I'm like. Right on. Okay, good. Somebody actually has the brain power to understand that. All right, that's good. Makes you see how he does. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I wanted to ask, uh, do you do you have an understanding of it as well, or just uh, following his direction? I don't verse it as well as he does, um, but I get the gist of it. Yes. <laughs> I, I've actually been trying to get a uh, Stephanie Kelton uh, on the show to kind of uh, have her. Uh, um, talk about that herself since she is a professor in that and economic uh, overall. I also know that supposedly she's uh, on uh, the Biden uh, Financial Committee or something to that effect. I, checked. Mm, I didn't know that. Yeah, well, I, I think, yeah, I think I saw uh, her name on, on a list of that. Um, do you guys have such a list? As far as? Uh, like finances or stuff of that nature. Just, just like a general purpose, like whomever you guys uh, get advice from as far as like how to get this done, how much it take to get this done, that kind of thing? There's a diversity of people that we work with. And the budget for the Eco Socialist Green New Deal, how we confer it with some folks on it that, you know, are experts in that the field of, you know, dealing with economics. So that's not something I have a hand in, but... If you ever interview Howie, you know, he can give you the, um, the in-depth details on that. Well, let him know that. that was also created and something that was in place before he ever um, reached out to me about this. I mean, I knew about the Eco-Socialist Green New Deal before I came to this campaign. Well, let, uh, let Mr. Hawkins know that he has it in that I, mean, I do invite him onto the show. So uh, let him know if he, if he has a free time, uh, let me know and we can schedule something. Uh, He'd uh, reach out to his campaign, uh, his um, Twitter, yeah, if you follow uh, him. I, 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 I know he has one and I don't think he has a mailbox portion to it like you do, but I will I will keep trying as far as the program. I've, I've also, I've also um, um, offered to interview you guys as a campaign manager as well. So I've been, I've been trying to like get more and more in depth with the Green Party as, well, uh, as far as interviewing and highlighting people and stuff like that. that that's, that's basically my goal right now, as I told you from the very beginning. So, mm -hmm. so far, I've had a, a pretty good time uh, interviewing people in, in Green Party, uh, independence, and all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. um, now, you guys, uh, you guys allow people to run as independent Greens, right? I don't have to be full fledged Green Party members, but they. Yes. As far as I understand, you are a member of the party if you are representing the party. Okay. That is so, my understanding of that. Okay, because I, I, I noticed that, uh, let's see, uh, these for Maine is running as an independent Green. That's that may be the it. name of their party, but okay. she's, she's, she's a Green Party member, yes. Okay, I, so I wanted to make sure I, I had all this stuff right if you guys. Yes, uh, Lisa yeah. Savage is a Green. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, uh, so you guys, yeah, uh, again, earlier you, uh, you said that you guys want to do Ministry for All for the community base as well as uh, police departments. Um, is there anything else you guys want to make community base, like uh, energy of sorts or... Uh, energy, housing, uh, public schools, public transportation, banks. Yeah, all of it. Um, let's see. Is there anything else? Uh, actually, I think uh, that pretty much covers what I wanted to talk to ask you about. At least for now, okay. it was. Mm -hmm. uh, I I, I uh, did an interview with um with Amy uh, uh, Sleeper earlier. Yes. That, that didn't go very well on my part, but I was not very prepared. So I, I'm trying to do another one with her. <laughs> so, but uh, anyway, good people. Yeah. Uh, 
so far from what I from what I I understood from her, she is she is a good person. Yeah, she's very so, good people. So anyway, uh, I I should probably let you go either way. So. Well, I appreciate you taking your time. Well, thank you very much for being on the show. Uh, I'm hoping I can do this again with you, and uh, hopefully, uh, how we would be uh, more than willing to, uh, to share the same screen with me as far as that part goes. And uh, thanks for being here. I, I've been looking. I was. I have been looking forward to this for a long time, and I look forward to interviewing with you again. Uh, maybe another month or so. Yeah, things change. So absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for being here. And thank you for having me. Have a good night. You too. Thank you.